Hello everybody, my name is Bob, uh, and uh, this is another From the Depth Showcase. Uh, now the first thing I want to show you is actually not our main event today, uh, but uh, just a, a little starter craft I made. Something I could I could uh, put out real early in the, the game, like when I'm first trying to defend, defend my area. Uh, so, if I can find it. The Roach Class Patrol Boat. We'll get rid of the uh, spawn of fortress <coughs> and just spawn in a marauder. Here we go. And as you can see, although it has hydro pools in the back, it doesn't even really um, uh, touch the water back there. So it's uh, amount of, of, of the uh, ship that's actually in the water is very tiny. It has these little defenses here. Uh, I, don't, I haven't even really tested them. Uh, it's got two torpedoes and some missiles. Uh, very, very small, very fragile. It's only uh, uh, 29,000 materials. It's got two small custom jets here and some like, regular jets. Goes about 94 meters a second. And we're AI dead. Goodbye. Let me kind of show you the innards here. Oh, and build mode. As you can see, not, not really a whole lot to it. Got torpedoes. It's got a, a jet up, jet up, jets up here to steer, and a jet to uh, keep its nose far enough down the water uh, to um, to not just flop over. It's got a little engine. It's got some decoys over here with sticky flares and radar target simulators. Uh, it's got. Uh, uh, Another another uh, decoy over here. Uh, apparently, I assume that this is going to fall in the water, so I also put a sonar target simulator on it. AI uh, down here, very simple. Now let me show you how these um, the front hydropoles works. The back hydropoles uh, are not uh, uh, actively controlled; they're always up, so they're always like that. Uh, the um, the front hydropoles are uh, actively controlled by these control blocks. Let me uh, let me get him in motion. So listening, moving out, moving out. You can see these um, these actively control, uh, and that's controlled by these two um, uh, control blocks. Uh, basically, um, if it's uh, if it's a little bit too low, it'll go down. A little bit too high, or sorry, a little bit too high, it'll go uh, uh, it'll go down, and a little bit too low, it'll go up. Uh, so that keeps it like right in the, the thing, right in the zone. And as you see, these hydropoles at this point are not even hardly touching the water. They touch the water every once in a while. Okay, that's the uh, Roach class um, uh, patrol boat. Um, 
I've developed a uh, a uh, naming system just so I don't have to think up think up new names for everything all the time. Um, uh, little patrol boats like this are freshwater fish, named after freshwater fish. Uh, the roach is actually a freshwater fish, uh, and um, uh, airships are named after cetaceans, whales and dolphins and stuff. Um, uh, let's see what else. All right, so fresh freshwater fish patrol boats. Um, and uh, cetaceans are airships, and um, uh, submarines are salt seawater fish, uh, saltwater fish. Uh, and uh, uh, if you have, have any like big ships, like um, larger than a destroyer, uh, I would name those after um, uh, basically famous Brit British naval ships. Uh, but that's sort of the naming system. Okay, this is more the uh, main event today. Uh, the Zephyrne um, airship. Now, you may ask yourself, self, what the hell is a Zephyrne? A Zephyrne is a, um, a family of uh, of uh, beak-nosed whales. Uh, actually, actually, interestingly enough, they're amongst the the most um, mysterious and least known. Uh, whales in existence. Uh, so that's uh, like a, uh, beaked whales. Uh, so that's the name of the family of, or a family of beaked whales. And it costs a little over 200,000 resources. I basically wanted to um, uh, build something that would that I could use some uh, rail guns on. Cause I, after, after playing from the depths for for some years now, I finally got started getting into uh, to uh, rail uh, rail guns, and um, I think the reason why I didn't get them into them that much before is maybe I, one I didn't understand them, and uh, two, uh, their parts are pretty expensive. Uh, let's take a look at the parts for it. Like uh, that's 400 bucks, that's 50 bucks, that's 300 bucks. So the parts for the rail gun are pretty expensive, but uh, rail guns can really cut through the armor. They can they can just slice through. Uh, there, there's some rail guns out there that, that can slice slice all the way through a battleship. Now it's only only going to be like one one block thick, slicing through the battleship. But it's going to go to go all the way through. Uh, this one's not quite as powerful, but uh, it's only like a 236 uh, millimeters. Uh, but still, it it's, uh, it penetrates. So uh, let me show you the innards. Up here is a, uh, a couple of barely hunky engines. Uh, they each put out. Uh, oh, uh, each have the capacity to put out um, uh, 4,800 stable power. Actually, you don't need it, that as uh, engines that big. Up here are a pair of large missiles. Laser defense system. And the railgun. Uh, it's only like th 236 millimeter railgun, so it's not a, not a huge railgun, but it uh, it definitely will punch through some armor. Let me uh, take a look in here. All right, so um. Uh, It'll fire, uh, I think it was like about once every couple seconds. Uh, and, um, uh, let's see, the, uh, the speed is 999 meters a second, including 385 meters a second from rails. Uh, so, uh, it'll, it'll punch through pretty good. It won't make a, won't make a big hole, but it will definitely punch. Okay, so there's two of those. Uh, vertical uh, custom jets to keep it aloft. Uh, what I wound up, ha wound up having to do is um, uh, I started out having it set to roller preset and pusher preset, but I found out that if, if, I, if I do uh, roller preset, pusher preset, and also set secondary positive so that the uh, uh, so the uh, what the hell is it called? 
these things, PID, so that the PID can control altitude using them, that, uh, that it screwed up. So I just have it set on roller preset and then secondary positive, and I have a PID to, uh, to set it to uh, stay at uh, 300 meters altitude. And these, so these uh, control the, the uh, altitude and the uh, roll. Uh, laser defense system. Uh, batteries. Uh, batteries. Uh, the um, uh, rail guns require electrical power from batteries. I have two, actually four sets of uh, batteries right here uh, that don't have uh, generators on them. That are just solely for uh, for the uh, uh, rail guns. Uh, so in other words, uh, these will drain. These ones right here will drain to, to power the lambs, uh, but. Um, but uh, these won't. They'll only be for the the railgun. So it'll, the railgun will always have power, even if even if the lamp is really sucking down the electrical power. Uh, that, that they'll always have power here because there's no no um, generator on it. Uh, this is just a decoy. Pretty standard radar target target simulators. Uh, ammo. And where is the? Here it is. Uh, this is the sonar boy. So in other words, even if something is completely underwater, uh, I'll be able to see it with the sonar sonar boy. And I have the requisite parts uh, set up on the uh, AI so that it can use that. And actually, it has already used that once. There was one ship that was enough submerged that. Um, it was considered to be below water, but um, but uh, it wasn't um, uh, wasn't sunk yet, and so um, uh, this will allow the uh, airship to uh, get sonar feedback. And the main reason why it needs sonar feedback is uh, torpedoes right here. Uh, and uh, custom jets for the main propulsion. I got regular, regular large jets for the uh, attitude and uh, the yaw control over here. Yaw control over here. Yep. And uh, also the pitch control over here. Okay, as you can sort of briefly see, uh, let me we'll take it out. Look, the um, uh, there's a fair amount of even though it's all uh, alloy, uh, there's a fair amount of ar armoring over the uh, the uh, various critical parts uh, of the uh, craft. So it is pretty rugged to, to taking hits. Uh, it's not like some of my my previous airships where it's just basically just a skin of uh, of alloy over over the the innards. Uh, this has got um, got uh, two layers, uh, pretty much everywhere, and uh, over the uh, over the guns, uh, got the gun caissons. Uh, it's got um, uh, one, two, uh, three in parts, and then the uh, these um, uh, these what the fuck do you call them? My, my applique panels. My brain's not working today. And so it's got a the applicate panels over over both of the the uh, gun caissons uh, to further protect the uh, the guns from damage. And inside the gun, there there's um, uh, one, two, uh, three layers of uh, of uh, alloy covering up the the uh, vital parts uh, inside the uh, the gun, and then the the uh, outer outer layer. Okay, I, I could um, uh, uh, sort of deploy this against something um, uh, more respectable than this, what I'm about to deploy it against. The problem is um, uh, when I do like the, the steel strider uh, vessels, uh, the battles tend to take a long time. Um, especially, uh, what's the one I was, I was playing with just a minute ago? 
Yeah, the Trondheim. Uh, it was holding against, its own against the Trondheim, but the Trondheim has such powerful missile uh, and tor even torpedo defenses um, uh, that it, it's just it's taking forever. So we won't be we won't be fighting anything like that. Uh, we'll just go with. Uh, now I haven't actually tested against either of these. And I'm still in the process of kind of fine-tuning it a little bit. So it's not finished by any, any stretch of the imagination. But, but the, the work that has to be done is mostly of a, uh, a fine-tuning nature. And we're getting some decent little, uh, little confetti going on here. And incoming torpedoes and missiles. Incoming torpedoes. Yeah, those large missiles really put the hurt on. Kaboosh! I love torpedoes. Get some nice block confetti going on. All right, now it's in the water. It's only a matter of time now. Hush now, hush. Just accept it. There you go. I've got to show you what I'm uh, what I'm going with for the uh... Alright, here's the uh, ammo controller here uh, basically, just tap it head with uh, a little frag. I'll put that frag warhead on, on the, the back, thinking maybe it'll blow up inside. Uh, I'll probably be better off just switching that back to tap it head, I think. But. Uh, 
That's a PID to control roll, uh, and the pitch, and the altitude. Like I said, the altitude is set to secondary drive because when I had it on pusher preset and secondary drive, uh, it's it kind of screwed up. So I just you know, decided to go without the pusher preset and just go with roll and secondary drive. I assume it's dead. Let's try something a little bit more. I think Trebuchet has some, has, I don't know if I'm thinking it right, but uh, I think Trebuchet may have big missiles, in which case that could actually hurt. And like I said, I have not, have not tested against the Trebuchet yet. We'll find out. And with all, all such things, you know, whenever I'm, you know, spending uh, 100,000 or 200,000 resources on something, uh, ooh, uh, I, I, I always wonder, eh, yeah, could I do that so with something cheaper? Um, like, I'm pretty sure that, you know, uh, whoa, yeah, that's, that's got, that's going to hurt. Um, yeah, I'm pretty sure that, that uh, a small squadron of my very cheap uh, submarines could take this thing out. And this thing may, may be suffering. Yeah, it may, may be, because of those, that LAM, LAM system is not strong enough. Yep, it's dead. It's dead. It's going down. Yeah, those big missiles, missiles you can't handle those. Somehow it's staying up in the air, I don't know how. Oh shit. Okay. I want to try something just for grins. Uh, these are 23 uh, each, 23,000 each, and that thing was like 300 or 500,000, I think, the, the trebuchet. Uh, so let's like do uh, five of these. We'll do we'll do three of each, three of the regular and the M. And that's a great deal cheaper. trebuchet and so these together aren't but about a hundred thousand and the trebuchet is uh, five hundred thousand so I'm just kind of doing a little mental experiment on uh, how cost-effective these guys are these guys are colliding near each other that's no bueno.
Oh, it's got torpedoes. And those are big old torpedoes as well. What's it going for the decoy? Now we're going for another decoy. Now one of those torpedoes would definitely disintegrate one of my dories, but um, it's a uh, matter of it actually hitting them. Had some missile, some torpedoes um, just go totally astray there. Let's take a look at the, the uh, tally here. Listening, 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 listening. Well, they're all looking good so far. Hold on. Listening. 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 None of them been hit. So in this case, uh, the uh, submarines are way more cost effective. Assuming that if they win, which it looks like they're going going to eventually. Yeah, they're digging some holes, so they're, they're gonna, they would win eventually, I would think. Now, like I said, well, any one of those torpedoes would, would put an end to the dories, but they have to hit them first. All right, well, this is going to take a while, so, uh, so, um, uh. Let's throw the ZPD in, in for the kills just for grins. Hey, you see, it's, it's got a reasonable layering going on. I'm guessing I'll use something like this as sort of a uh, rapid response force, because it is, you know, much faster than the uh, submarines. Like, about three times as fast. But also, uh, enemies can see it, and it's big. It's a big target. I may have to throw a sea whiz on here just for uh, to to add some extra oomph to the um, the missile defense. Yeah, I think I'm gonna do that. Yeah, because those large missiles are definitely not being taken down very satisfactorily with the uh, lasers. I mean, sometimes they are, but like this guy.
Now let's drop some confetti. No, really, it's the submarines that are that are uh, that are winning the battle here. Kaboosh! 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 Ah, some nice confetti. Yeah, the submarines really win the battle here. The, the, the airships just kind of stay alive. Okay. Oh, crash. Did you crash? Nope, you're okay. That's it. Oh, she wrote. I think that's all for right now. Listening. Until next time, hasta la vista. Adios.